Crypto Pro Live coming on soon. Popcorn ready. Have the pot of coffee on. Today's topic, meme coin swing trading. Everybody, it is I, Carlton Flowers, your crypto pro. Yay! And it's time to talk crypto swing trading the meme coins. Yay! All right, sounds like the audio is working out. I don't need my headphones there. 
Got OG Vault in the house. Yay! We got Julian Medina, Funky Cold Medina in the house. Yay! Smash that like button, and we are going to get down and get this done tonight. So in today's video, I'm going to tell you about some of my recent moves. And uh, I had a nice swing trade. I'll give you the details on that and the chart. And then I had one that I think... I lost some money on, which is kind of sad. We're going to investigate. I think one of my memes went to crap. In fact, there are three that I suspect have ended. Um, not to say that they might not make a rebound because they might come back. Um, however, it takes practice. It takes diving in. And after watching uh, OG Vault's live stream, and you need to subscribe to OG Vault. Chris does an excellent live stream. He's got 17,000 subs. He's been in this game for a while, got the start in the NFT market, and now he is swing trading meme coins. And I tell you what, he pulls the trigger buying and selling a lot quicker than I do and is able to get some of these ones that come right out of the box. Right now, my swing trades cover a span of one week to about a month or longer. And I'm trying to squish that down into a shorter period of time so I can generate money for this bull run. So the first one that we are going to talk about is Anita Max Win. So we're going to look at the chart of win. Let me pull it up on the computer and then I'm going to tell you exactly what I pulled off, what my trade was. I did a lot of accumulation. Um, I might have purchased like five different times and I will even show you the spreadsheet that I have produced that calculates my overall DCA price, my overall average price, where you take the amount that you buy, multiply that by the price, and then you do a weighted average to get your overall purchase price. So if you've got like five orders and you were buying at one cent, two cent, three cent, four cents, and five cents, and each order was at 1,000 uh, tokens, you would have a DCA price of 2.5 cents over 5,000 tokens. And that would let you know that you could sell anywhere above 3.5 cents to break even or make a profit. So I would encourage you to calculate your purchases and get that DCA cost. And in fact, if you would like, I could take my spreadsheet that I'll try to show you here tonight and convert that to a Google Sheets spreadsheet and post up a link, make a blank spreadsheet that has all of the formulas built into the spreadsheet. Maybe you could do that on your own. Okay, so let's jump over to the chart. We're going to look at the win chart. And then I'm going to tell you when, no pun intended, I bought and when I sold. So I started buying when I think I bought at one cent, somewhere around here. I thought it was going to continue up. So I bought right at one cent, but it was only like 10 tokens, just a small purchase to get myself started. And the reason why I'll buy 10 tokens at one cent for 10 cents is just to see it in my portfolio so I remember, so it's in front of my face. And then from that point on, I started the DCA game and I'm buying all the way throughout this period here. Now, let me see if I can pull up my spreadsheet. And I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. Let me double check over here. My spreadsheet does not come up. So I'm just going to read it off for you. So for when... Uh, I started buying on November the 4th of, uh, I put 1906. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Let me change that date. It was 2023 in November that I purchased the first time. Um, as a matter of fact, that might not be right. That might have been the 4th of March. We'll just say the 4th of March. So at any rate, I had the 1000 that I bought at one cent. That was $10, not 10 cents. I'm sorry. I bought 1000 Then I bought 2500 at 9.8 cents. Then I bought 10000 at 7.6 cents. Then I got 11500 at um, point, or I'm sorry, 0 0.0098, point 0.98 cents. Then I got 11500 at point zero zero seven one. Then I got 10000 more at point zero zero six four seven. And the last order on the 31st of March, 
I got 15,000 at 0 0.0057. So when you do the little calculator, I come up with a DCA price of 0 0.00688 for the 50,000. I turned around and I sold at 0 0.0086. So once we started to move up, let me see if I can, when we have this move right here, I sold right here after we touched on the 200 EMA and come back down, I got spooked and sold. Now it did move back up and just barely touched on one cent. Now it's in decline. So it's below my selling price. So when I sold, I made a profit of $85.93, which is not bad, guys, not bad. I spent $344.07. When I sold out, I cashed out for $430 even, profiting $85.93. So if I were to buy back in right now, I could get 55,000 tokens instead of 50,000 tokens. But I'm not going to do that. I'm looking to jump into something else that has a little bit more profit built in. Okay, let me uh, check and see who we got in here tonight. See what people are saying. Um, yeah, so making some money on uh, shit, 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 chitan, chitan on Saul. I will look at that, post the price on that and what the total supply is. So hello to all nine viewers. That is great. We got seven likes. You guys are doing great. Seven likes and nine concurrent viewers. That's pretty tight. We are about to roll. Okay, so jumping back into the chart, let's look back on this win chart. Right now, it looks to me like we could continue sinking down. This is the four hour. When we look at the one hour, uh, we do have a nice little cross. It was coming up, but this is encouraging. We got a bearish cross right there. Looking at the MACD downstairs, we have a bearish decline where the fast line, which is the blue one, is falling away from the slow line, which is this yellowish one. And we're printing solid red bars on the histogram. You see, when they're solid red, we're moving away from the zero line and declining. When they're light red, it's trying to make its way back to the zero line. And then we reversed, and now we got two solid reds, so we're still floating down here to the zero line, and we could go downstairs on the histogram. But we are downstairs on these bars. So we are in decline, and this little cross over here means we are in decline because the fast line, the blue line, has crossed over the slow line, which is that orange line. So we want that to come on down here below this 20 line that will tell us that we're in the oversold zone. Looking upstairs on price, we can see some possible targets on the VPVR. That's these little bars over here. Now, volume bars are down here. These tell you how much is bought on each time period. So on the one hour chart for this particular hour of the day, this is how much was bought. For this next bar, this is how much was sold because there was more selling than buying. So when you add up the purchases and add up the sales, whatever's left over, if it's more sell orders than buy orders, you put that amount on the histogram. If it's more buying than selling, it makes a green bar on the histogram. But over here on the VPVR, this is telling you how much volume is bought and sold at a particular price point. We have the point of control price, which is the biggest volume node on the sideways one. So that means the most win within this visible range of this chart right here, dating back to say the fifth, the fourth of this month, most of it was bought and sold at this price point of 0 0.0059. Usually when you get a big volume node like this one, which is the point of control, the balance point, price will tend to gravitate towards these big nodes. We have this big node up here at 0 0.008, but notice that we're falling below that. So now we're getting stuck to this current one, which is pretty big at 0 0.0075. We're just a tick below that volume node at the current price. So the next one, it'll snap down here to 0 0.0074. And if we fail that, we get into what I call a slip zone. And that's where there's not much purchasing going on at these price points until you get this big, huge hump 
around the point of control price. So my gamble will be that we'll fall down to 0 0.00599 and that's when I'm going to ape back in. Okay, let's look at the four hour chart again and see what we can see on the VPVR. Here is the point of control of the visible range. We pull in this amount and it's around the same price, a 0 0.006 roughly. I think that could be a support point. And notice how I've got this green box. This green box is based on where price has been supported in the past and where it has been rejected in the future during this range, okay? So we can see that when price settled down here, it bounced on the bottom of the box. If it settles down, it bounces on the bottom of the box. Then it blew through the top of the box and guess what? It becomes support. So we ran up here, it bounced and it supported here, bounced up again. It starts to fall down, it bounces up again, support. The ball comes up, it bounces on the table again, it goes up. The next time it fell through, so now we're back in the strike zone. This is my strike zone and we're bouncing around. There it is, resistance, even though it barely poked up above through it here on the four hour. And then it floats around down here around this point of control price. It tried to shoot up again, resistance. Notice how we hit our head on the 200 exponential moving line right there. We tend to have pivots around the 50 EMA and the 200 EMA. And whenever this blue line, see this blue line? Whenever we get a crossover where the faster orange line, the 50 period EMA, crosses below the 200, you're bearish. So we're bearish right now. So you can see that we have high points, lower high lower high, lower high. We're still in that downtrend. And now the stochastic oscillators, yeah, we went way up here above the 80 line. We're gonna call this the overbought zone, okay? And once the fast line, the blue line, crosses over that slow one, now it's steeply declining. See these oscillators? They're declining. We want this to come all the way down here to the oversold zone. Now you can see here on the oscillators with the MACD, they lag the oscillators on the stochastic. So notice how the blue line is curling down and it's trying to find that 50 EMA like uh, up here. The blue line is curling down to the fast line right here or the slow line and it's probably going to cross over. And you see we're going from dark green on the histogram, which says we're increasing, to light green, which says we're decreasing. Okay, so we're probably going to come all the way down here to the zero line and start printing red bars on the histogram. When you look at the one-day chart, it gets a little bit different. Let's look at that, and then I'll come back to your questions. Here we see we're going vertical on the stochastic, going straight up in the air, right? And you can see also that we have a positive crossover where the blue line overtakes the yellow one, which is the slow one, and we're printing solid green bars on the histogram. But what do we have upstairs? There's a little red candle forming right there. And what that red candle can do, it can bend this blue line over and make it go back down. So what you normally get, you get a stochastic peak, then you get a rebound and we have a lower peak. And then we go all the way down to oversold, we get a rebound and guess what? This is probably gonna curl over and have another lower stochastic cycle peak. And that means that it'll probably crawl down here towards that point of control price. And then I will jump in at that point and ride it for the next wave. So that's what I'm doing with when. That's how I swing trade. I DCA, 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 buying as it's slipping down. And then once it reverses, I wait, wait, wait. And when we get a pop, I sell it and take a profit. All right, let's jump back to the live stream and see who was in the house. We got 11 people in the house. Yay! 12 people in the house Yay! with nine likes. If you're new, hit that like button uh, as a thank you for the information that you are getting. So Julian Funky Cold Medina says, I'm drunk. I'm on drunk. Oh, 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 I thought you meant you're <laughs> For a second there, I thought you meant you're drinking. <laughs> okay, I'm on drunk, but it has not made any significant movement. Crypto overall has been a bit boring. It has. And a bit boring is a good thing. Hey, we got 11 concurrent viewers and 11 likes. 
That's what I'm talking about. That's my game. When it gets boring, that's great because it is a time to buy because pretty soon we're not going to have boring anymore. We're going to be going vertical. So we get to take a breath and make our decisions on what we're going to buy. Carlos Castrejon. Is that how you say it? Castrejon uh, says trade byte meme coin. I will pull that up in a minute and look at byte meme coin. Now, let's take a look at my meme coins, so a lot of meme coins that are over on my uh, dextools.io where I keep my list of favorites. Um, I don't trade on Dex, dextools.io. If anybody has a paid account, please let me know and how much it is and if you think it's worth it. Oops. The reason why I ask, I am currently using uh, this radium and it sucks. I've been trying to like uh, trade um, some Sol for Rod AI and I can't ever get the swap to work. The, the trades are not finalizing. Watch this. I'm going to go ahead and just try to swap for 68,000. Hit the confirm. And here in the last week and a half, uh, radium has just been garbage for me. Watch what happens. Look how slow this website is. When I first started trading on um, Radium, it was slow, but the orders were finalizing. Now, I'm lucky if I get 1 in 10 of my swaps to fulfill. Let's hit approve. And let's just watch what happens. This is what's going to happen. It's going to sit here and it's going to think. And it's going to think and it's going to think. It'll just sit here spinning and we're going to come back and we're going to notice that none of this has been swapped. And I've got... Um, an entire 1.22 sol that is in the wallet. I got plenty for gas and I don't know why it's not working. So we will come back to that. Let's get back over to my list of favorites. So here we go. Let's start with this list. I've got some new ones for you. The first one is never. Never buy never. Never say never. <laughs> Now, the total supply is pretty big. It's $95 billion. $95 billion. It's a lot of money. Lots of money. Lots of tokens, rather. However, we got a lot of liquidity. It says 438000 And the 24-hour volume is at 41000 It's been higher. Okay? So with that liquidity and with such a low price, if we can move from 0 0.302s to, um, and just get rid of one decimal point, you're talking 10x capability. So I'm looking at never for swing trading short term, quick swing trades. Even if I can just double, you know, throw 50 bucks in and get a quick double. Um, if the liquidity is still there, I'm considering it. The next new one that is on the list is Duco. You want to take a Dookie or take a Duco? Total supply is only 10 billion. Look at that liquidity, guys, 638,000. We got a total of 20,000 holders on this. And look at the 24-hour volume. It is at 2 million. So I'm telling you what, I think Duco is ripe for swing trading. Now let's just look at uh, right now on the four-hour chart, we're in decline. It might be near the bottom. When we flip to the one-day chart, look where the positioning is. Price is corrected almost down where we had our base level. And the stochastic is in the oversold zone. But we do have a bearish cross where the blue line just flipped underneath the slow line. But on the MACD, we're printing light red bars on the histogram, which says it's crawling back up to the zero line. Now, I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to copy the address, the token address for Duco. And then I will show you a nice little tool. Let me get a new window here. And I'm going to show you the recent tool that uh, I think MK gave me this from the group. Let's see here. Where is my crypto folder? There we go. And we're going to jump down here to rug check. So in rug check, what we can do is somewhere here we can enter in 
that's on Solfin. Let's go back to the home and let's paste in this token address. Now I know this one's already good, but I just want to show you what this thing can do. So this is great for our Solana memes. It is thinking. So we got a price of 0 0.00166. It says that the risk analysis is good. Supply 10 billion. It gives us our top holders holding 11%, which is pretty good even distribution. Community sentiment. There's more people bullish than think that it is a pile of steaming crap. All right. Here are the market makers and the liquidity, most of which is on radium. So we should be able to fulfill an order on radium all right let's jump back to the chat and then i'm going to go ahead and try to do an order for this so uh og vault says use the telegram bot like shuriken i tell you what i did use the telegram bot i think i was telling you about that earlier um i did bust off my first telegram bot trade i think i'm using bonk bot but i will check out shuriken so is it similar to Bong Bot? Let me know. Oh, G Vault. Yay! Okay, so let's jump back over to Radium and see if this pile of crap can bust off a trade. Um, the real bite is on Coin Market Cap, not Solana. There's a fake bite. That is good to know, Carlos. Thank you very much. Okay, let's jump back to Radium, and we see that the swap failed. We did not get our rod AI. So when I look over here to, I did. Okay. It's me. <laughs> so it made a fool of me. That rod AI order did go through. So I guess the volume is uh, there and there was enough liquidity. So we are going to go ahead and bust off a swap. So you can either do it over here or you can do it over here, which is very cumbersome. So I'm going to click this down arrow, which Look at this. You got to like click and then go grab a cup of coffee, take a nap and come back. It's so frustrating. I can't believe that they do so much volume on radium with the site being so garbage. I mean, this is just ridiculous. Look at this. I'm still waiting on this. Still waiting to switch from Saul. Well, let's just see if I can do it from this point. Let's just do it over here since the other one doesn't want to work. So we're going to go from Saul. We're going to paste in our address. There we go. There's Dookie, Duco. Let's just get a little Dookie. Let's put a little Dookie on. A little Dookie. This is just for a test. We're playing the DCA game. And so we are going to spend 0 0.01 of our Solana. <clears throat> So $180 times 0 0.01 is what? $1.80. So we're going to get 1,086 dookies. Let's go. Confirm. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I tell you what. The reason why this might suck is because of the two projects that I'm going to be talking about in a minute here. We're going to get to it. So I'm going to hit the approve here. And then we'll let this spin. Then we're going to come back. And we're going to see if we successfully pulled this off. Did we get it? I don't know. I hit the swap already. And see, this is confusing too. So it comes back to this screen and it says swap. I don't get it. And it says balance zero. So it's hard to tell uh, if I click this button again, am I going to get another pile? I don't know. Oh, oh, oh. See, it's lagging. It's lagging. Well, I guess it's just quoting the price there. Well, let's just look down here and see. Now, see that? It did not fulfill that order. It's still hanging there. And that's what's frustrating. That's very frustrating. How about that? Let's go back here and see if we can click this again. It's not working. That is not working. I can't click... Let's see, we can click the saw. All right. Now let's try it over here. Okay. Um, dude, I don't want that one. I want to change. See how garbage the site is? It's just terrible. Well, let's try it over here again. Let's paste in the address. There it is. There's Duco. And let's try it again. 0.01 saw. After you hit confirm, that should be it. So I'm going to hit swap here. I hit swap. Tell me if I'm doing something wrong. I just confirmed it. Now we should get MetaMask popping up. And here's another thing. I don't understand how MetaMask is working with this because you cannot add the Solana 
blockchain with MetaMask. But for whatever reason, this has worked. I went through some guide, and since then, this is how I've been doing this. So now it's thinking. Let me see. I'm going to look here in the comments. OG Vault says that uh, um, Shuriken is similar to BonkBot. That's cool. Wow. Castrayon. I said it right. That's cool. So where are you from, Carlos? You know, en Espanol, me llamo Carlos. Uh, Carlos Flores, en Espanol. En Anglais, uh, me llamo Carlton Flowers, or Carl. When I was young and we visited the country of Spain, I met a young man when I was four years old, and I tried multiple times to get him to say my name, Carlton, and he couldn't say it. He kept saying Carlos, and from that point on, my family was so tickled by it. Carlos has been one of my many nicknames ever since then, since I was like four years old. Okay, well, we're still waiting, and I don't think that the swap worked. That is just mind-boggling. I don't understand it. I don't understand. Well, let's leave this screen here, and then we're going to continue. Tony Corona is in the his house. Yay! What's up, Tony? It's all good chatting with you in the Telegram group. Um, let me jump back here to the rest of the comments. Uh, Julian Funky Cold Medina, I want to pay your yearly membership. Okay. Um, I don't know if they can do a yearly, but the monthly will be on there. It would be great if I can pay in USDT. Well, I can, I'll figure it out, dude, for sure. I'll put that on my to do list. I'll get that hooked up. I'll get it taken care of. Let me just jump into that tonight. I'll research it and see if I can override and add somebody as a member for a year. I, I should be able to do that. Um, so we'll see how that works out. Tim says Solana Network has been congested for a week or two. So do you think it's a, it's a Solana thing and not Radium? Unfortunately, getting higher than normal failed transactions, they are working on a fix. Okay. Thank you very much, Tim. That is very valuable info. Tony Corona, same here. I want to pay for the year. I will get it figured out. Tony Corona and Julian Funky Co. Medina. Leave it up to me. I will get it done. I'll uh, get that on my to-do list. I got to take off my boot. I got to itch. Good Lord. The bottom of my foot is itching. <laughs> okay, so we've got 12 concurrent viewers in the house. Yay! And we have 12 likes. I like that. I like that. Good job. Good job. We're just blowing this thing up. Boom. We're going to blow it up. Now let's get on to some of the failures. I'm going to jump back over here. Well, let's just take a peek and see if that trade went through. And thanks again for that insight. Um, Juniper, I've considered that. Juniper, and there's one other, isn't there? Have you used Juniper? And my question on Juniper would be, do we have enough liquidity to fill the orders. Let me know on that. Okay, so here we are back on the swap and it is not working. I'm going to click the portfolio. There's my Solana and it is at the same amount. So we were able to buy 70 million Rod AI and we were not able to fulfill our order of uh, whatever that token <laughs> was that it just had. Um, yeah, I agree. Schwarzer man is in the house. What is up, Schwarzer? Yay! Yeah, it's a pile of crap. It is so frustrating. So Jupiter is the best Dex for Solana. Can you let me know? Is the is the liquidity there? Because when you look up these tokens and you see where all the liquidity is, um, stupid radium is usually number one. Um Tony says, it's my go-to decks for all, like Saul Candle, Stanley Pup, and other meme coins. All right, I will check that out. So getting back to the list, that was Duco. We're still trying to get it. Moki Cat, I was trying to buy last night. And look what happened since I tried to buy it. Um, first of all, look at the supply, 998 million. That's not bad, guys. It's a billion, and it's at .0046. But look at what the price was 
gee whiz, it's up 93%, 93% just from, say, here, from two to four. See, you could have doubled your money. I could have thrown 50 bucks in this and got 100 back just on that jump. The one-day chart, there is not enough data here, but I'm assuming it's going to go down before it goes up. Notice how the stochastic, the fast line is now above the 80 line. The slow line is above the halfway point. So we should be able to get a rounding off here and we should get a cycle down. Looking at the one hour chart, it is popping up into the overbought zone. So if we can get this to hump over and maybe come down to this point of control price at 0.0033, it's going to be time to ape in. The more volume that you put in here, it looks like the overall price, the swing point, the balance point is at around 0 0.003. Moki Cat has 272,000 of liquidity. And look at the 24-hour volume, guys. 654,000 with excellent tokenomics. That's not bad. Nearly or all of it, 100% is in the circulation. And the last time I checked, I think this one passes all tests. Okay, next on the list, we have PUP. All right, so PUP has 5 billion supply. Not bad. Liquidity is not as great at 91,000. 24-hour volume is pretty low at 20,000, but maybe it's up and coming. Let's look at the four-hour chart, and we can see that PUP is nearing... This base level, notice how you fire up, come down, touch, fire up, come down, and then this is the new base right here. So if we take our little drawing tool and we want to make a rectangle, what we would do is we would draw a rectangle that includes this base, and we're going to come on down the line, and we're going to touch these little tops there, okay? And that's how you make your strike zone box. See that? And if we drag this over here, then we'll kind of see that, uh, well, there's not too much confluence with this touch point. But when you see this give back candle where we go down and back up the equal amount, really the true level is up here, closer to the top of that support and resistance zone, which tells me we could keep this box right there. Now, if we want, we could lower it down just a little bit, make it touch this top or come right between this green candle and this red. That'll make us a good strike zone box. That's how I do it. Next is Jeet. Jeet is one that I've been trying to swing trade. I missed out on like a 300% because I could not get the orders to fill. Why? I think it's here. Look at the liquidity. It's only 41,000. There's only 2,000 holders. 24 hour volume is 55,000, but that should have been enough volume for me to grab $100 worth, or one would think. Total supply is sweet at $974 million. Now, this one is interesting because it's made by the same developer who brought us Solama. But when we run over to CoinMarketCap, we're going to see an interesting message here. And this is one thing I like about CoinMarketCrap. We've got comments. We can see what people are saying over here. And if I scroll down, there's a good message. All right. Look at this message about Jeet. This guy was saying that he was predicting a crash and people didn't listen to him. And so um, he was saying that the dump came by the same big wallet and that it's clear that the developer is a big fat scammer and he doesn't care what happens with his promoted projects or the community he leaves behind. I don't know if any of this is true. Um, but he said he did the same thing uh, in Marvin. And Trump, JN, and Solfin. Solfin's another one that I'm riding. And then there's Salama. And he claims that Salama has overcome this step already because most of the people have slapped up the tokens that he dumped. So it can have a positive future. Now with Jeet, I'm taking a big gamble. I'm trying to grab a pile of this. Can you imagine getting, say, a couple hundred thousand Jeet at 0 .00017? and then wait until the bull market hits, where this thing has the same tokenomics as Miro. Not to say that this could uh, do anything near Miro's extent, but what if? I mean, this is a roll of the dice. It's a gamble. 
So who knows? Let's jump back to the comments real quick, and then we'll can continue down the list. Alrighty, we've got 17 concurrent viewers. Yay! And we have 13 likes. <laughs> All right, let's smack a couple more likes. Maybe bring that up to 15 to show your appreciation for the alpha. Now, one thing I might say when I get this membership group, when Tony Corona and Julian Funky Cole Medina join my membership group, they're going to get my private videos and I'm going to be posting technical analysis like Deep Dive TA on the projects that we're swing trading. And that's what I'm going to be working for. I'm not really going to be telling them how to get rich. I'm not going to be telling them, hey, I guarantee you if you buy this coin, uh, I got insider information. None of that. I'm going to provide alpha. I'm going to give support. I'm going to give due diligence and help to read charts. And when they have questions or say, hey, Crypto Pro, can you check out this chart and just get me a general feel? How do you feel about this chart? Then I'm going to do that. And we will have a chat group in Discord that is connected to Ko-Fi, the membership site. And that's where the members are going to get their private discussion and access to me. Hey, good job on the likes, guys. We are up to 16. Yay! I mean, look at that. 16 likes and 17 concurrent viewers. You guys are rocking it out. Woo! All right. Uh, let's see here. Um, second biggest dex. Schwarzer man, thank you very much. So that's Jupiter. Jupiter is the second biggest DEX. All right, you can't trade anything with any sort of volume on Solana without TV bot like Shuriken or Unibot, says Big A. Yay! Big A all up in the house. We got Austin Pega. Yay! Or was it Pija? It's Pija, right? You corrected me last time and now I forgot. Okay, um, TV bot. A TV bot. What's a TV bot? I guess that's a trading bot. Shuriken is the one that OG Vault Yay! had mentioned before. Thank you, OG Vault. Thank you, Austin Pija. Okay, so POU, meme on Solana. Um, I'm going to have to start writing these down. There's going to be so many on here. I'm going to forget what they are. Let me get a little notepad. So you guys had POU. Uh, and what else? You had one other that you wanted me to look at. Let me scroll up in the comments. Post it again. What was the other? Okay, drunk. We had drunk and bite. And bite was not a Solana, but we're going to look at that too. So let me write down drunk and bite. I will have a look at those before we conclude the live stream. So now we are up to a whopping 20 concurrent viewers. Yay! Now, if you're here and you haven't hit the like button, that's your um, payment. You got to hit the like button because we're giving alpha here. I'm sharing stuff that I will normally be charging for, guys. You know, this is good information. I'm teaching you how I read the charts. Moving back to DexTools.io. And I also, uh, please let me know. If anyone is using DexTools.io, which you must pay a monthly fee. Now, if I can swing trade and it works, I'm good with paying the fee. I think, what is it, like, is it 20, 30 bucks a month, something like that? I love this DexTools.io site, and I would be willing to do my swing trades here if I hear a report from other people that it works. All right, so that was JEET. Um... Let's go to Solfin. So I'm holding Solfin. I have 50,000. It only has a liquidity of 30,000. It's only got 2.25 thousand holders. 24 hour volume is dwindling down to 5,500. That's not very good. So this is a long shot, but look at this. This is in the dog days. If you will remember when I teach, I talk about the four phases of crypto. And that would be accumulation, and that's when you're really in this quiet period where it's laying low like a dog and people are picking up small amounts not to wake up the neighborhood. It's just a dog laying on the ground. And then we go into consolidation. That means you get a bump. And it's like, uh-oh, here comes the volume. The volume kicks in, and then we see a little bit more tumultuousness in the price action. And then we go into the third phase of the market, which is markup. Okay, and then after markup, we get a blow off top and we go into distribution, 
where we get the whipsaw effect. You get a violent dump, and then you get a big recovery, then you dump again, and then you have recoveries of lower highs until you go all the way back down into accumulation. So this coin is an accumulation. Now, this is not a four-year cycle. This is a mini cycle within the bull market because you will have these that will happen over a matter of weeks or months within the overall four-year cycle. So this is accumulation. Once the volume kicks in, you're going to get a little bump and it's going to be consolidation. Then we're going to have another markup. We're going to get a higher high and then we'll get a whipsaw distribution phase and we might end up at a higher base. Each time you go into the next accumulation period, it should form a higher base if it is a healthy coin. Okay, so let me know if that makes sense. Those are the four phases of market activity. And I learned that from a book that was written in the 1950s. And it was written about the stock market. So this concept has data that proves its point that dates back to the roaring 20s. And I've been using it since 1999 when I was playing during the dot-com bubble burst, when I was buying and selling penny stocks and small cap NASDAQ stocks. So anyway, total supply is a billion. And this one is a roll of the dice as we don't know if this volume and liquidity is going to come up. Next one I got my eyes on is Honk. Honk has a total supply of under a billion, just a tick. But look at the liquidity, 663,000. We got 13,000 holders and we got a respectable 110,000 of volume. Volume's down, but once again, we're in the dog days. This is in an accumulation phase. If we look at the one day chart, we can see it here. Here's markup, distribution, blow off top, First recovery, and then it goes into another accumulation, consolidation, markup, distribution, dog days. So I'm looking to buy into Honk once this stochastic crossover that has gone bearish, it gets below that 20 line, I'm going to jump on. Now we're below the balance point on the VPVR, which is at 1.3 cents. So this is a bargain. So you could really start the DCA game right now. All right, let's do a couple more. Then I'm going to show you one that I lost, that I might have lost everything on. Here's Bonk. I'm not a fan of the circulating supply. Um, looking at these tokenomics, look at the total supply, 93 billion or trillion. That's just stupid. In other words, it's infinite. But look at the price action. It gets traded, okay? So you could go from, say, 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, okay, for a 400% gain if you're buying low enough. But this one I'm not so excited about, but I'll keep my eyes on it. Why? Because of the 4.48 million liquidity, the 693,000 holders, and this huge 1.4 million volume. So if we can get a big dip, if we can come down to this 200 EMA line, and the stochastic goes over, sold, and when the one hour and the four hour chart and the one day chart all three have the stochastic in the oversold zone. That's what I call the trifecta. That's when I jump on and I'll ride it for a quick 2x or a 3x. Next coin, Samo. Coming in at 1.1 cents with great tokenomics. Samo has 5.7 billion. Great liquidity at 825,000. 24 hour volume is 77,000. Not bad, but we got 95,000 holders. So the Samoyed, however you pronounce it, coin has a great community. Looking at the chart on the one day, we're down here at a base level. So if we were going to do our little drawings, as the British say, drawings, where they put that extra R in, I'm going to draw a baseline right here at this touch point down here, okay? And then I'm gonna pull it up and I'm gonna find a resistance point. And it's about right there. So this could be, whoopsie daisy, this could be my strike zone. 
So it's within a strike zone. So when I get to the bottom of this box, maybe I'll go ahead and buy because we see that this support and resistance zone, it's support here. We blew through the top. We come back down. We blew through the top again. We come back down. Then kind of resistance, kind of resistance, settle down, support, blew through the top, come down, and then we dropped off back into the box. So we got that one. We've already done win, and now we're getting to Rocky. I think I lost on Rocky. Let's look at what the volume is over here. Now, the good thing is Rocky over here on Radium has 371,000 of liquidity. There are 7,000 holders with a 36,000 24-hour volume. I have not been able to buy Rocky as of yet on Radium. Okay, looking at the tokenomics, we have 999.98 million, roughly a billion, very similar to Miro. Rocky is supposed to be Miro's brother because it's supposedly based off of the dog of the other Solana founder. Okay, I have made some serious money on Rocky, but then I turn around and I bought back in at the wrong point. And I'm going to show you how I failed. So we had uh, this big rise, and we came back down. Uh, and when we floated around and then fooled around and started this move up right here, I bought back in right at about 0 .005, a half cent. So we're going up, I'm making money, and then guess what? Lower high, and now we're moving down. So I'm sitting on a bag. I can't remember how many. I think uh, my bag was worth... $265 at the moment. Guess what that bag is worth today? It's worth about 50 bucks. So I'm sucking on Rocky. Now when I jump over, I'm going to jump over to my wallet on my phone and I'm going to tell you what's happening there, which scared me, but I think it is only what's going on with Bitmark because that is where I bought my Rocky. So when I come over here, it says my bag is now worth $48.32. But when I go to trade Rocky and I try to enter it in, uh, the sad news is Rocky does not even come up under the search. So they have delisted poor Rocky. So what I'm going to do is send that Rocky over here to the Solana wallet that is on Radium. And I'm going to try to salvage this and trade on from there. So that was the loss. We had the win with win, pun intended, W-Y-N-N, -N, where I made that $86 on that last trade. And then we have a loss, but not a realized loss. This is an unrealized loss. What that means is it's a loss on paper. It becomes a realized loss when I sell for a loss. But right now, it's an unrealized loss. So I can sit on it and wait until there's a rebound. Honestly, I think Rocky is going to rebound. Let's check the messages, and then we're going to run back over and see if we can get some more action on radium okay so the real live bite let me just pull up let me go to coin market cap real quick and i'm going to look at bite before i forget about it i want to see the tokenomics because it's been a while uh let's see number 850 you can let me know if this is the right bite okay so here we are we're talking, oh, good God, a trillion. Okay, so it's just got one of these infinite, ridiculous amounts. You know, that's fine. Hey, where'd my page go? Hello. I did not tell this thing to jump off of bite. All right, well, let's get back over here to the questions while that page is loading. I don't know what happened to coin market cap. Okay, so getting down here, uh, we talked about Juniper. Um, we talked about the network congestion and Austin Pisha says, good night. It's glad. I was glad to have you Austin Pisha. Uh, Tony Corona says entry point on pup. We'll pull up pup. So let's stop right here and we're going to go back to dextools.io and we will pull up P U P. So let's see if I get the right one. 
Here's our search, and I'm assuming it's this first one. So let's click on this one. It says liquidity of 91,000. That's not too good, not too high. Let's look at the tokenomics. Five billion, that's not bad. There's only a thousand holders, so you know it's early. So that's, I like the price and the dice roll on this. This could be good. So let's talk about an entry point. Let's go ahead and look at the four hour chart. Oh, that's the one we just did. We were on PUP. What am I thinking of? So basically, you could be DCA and PUP now. And so at the bottom of this strike zone, support and resistance zone, it's point four zeros and a five. So we're at point triple O fourteen now. It could go uh, down to like triple O one and as low as triple O five. So you basically could. Start accumulating now as long as it's staying within this box and it could jump out of that box is when we look at the one day chart, we're still slipping down. See that blue line? It's under the red line. The fast line is under the slow line and they're pointing down. See, and we don't have enough data to get an MACD. But this tells us that um, we're probably gonna be pushing downward just a little bit more. So I'm gonna wait on PUP until maybe I get down below 0.301 all right that's what i'm going to do with pop okay we talked about cheetan so what just launched today chitin chai itin cheetin let me see if i can pull that up all right let's see here chi itan shit shit there cheetin cheetin we're cheating on cheating look at that supply not bad only a billion Got 192,000 liquidity, 2.79 million volume. Good Lord. All right, dude, let's jump down to the one hour. I like this, man. Oh, gee, did you just, I know you were playing this one. I know you'd been probably going bananas on this one. We're going to have to jump to the 30 minute or maybe even the 15. See, I like this. This is one that I can play for short term. Can't even get any data. We can go down to the five minute. Now we got data on the five minute chart. We got a stochastic. So what I'm going to look for is an entry point on this 15 minute chart. I'm going to look for this stochastic to jump down here below that 20 line. As soon as it does, it could be time to play. The biggest volume node is sticking out here at 0.0016. And then we have a volume node just below 0.301. Three zeros and a one. Now if it can come down to that point, I think I'm going to jump on. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make this one a favorite. And I'm going to put this on main list two. And I'm going to rename that list the day trade list since it's fresh and new. Thank you, OG Vault. Yay! For giving me that idea. All right, let me jump to the comments and then we'll continue on. Uh, you are very welcome, Tony Corona. See, I got to take care of my man, Tony. I got to take care of all of my guys, all of my crew who's going to be part of that group. I'm going to earn that. I'm going to earn that. So you're up 3X. I should have known that. I knew you were up already, OG Vault. <laughs> He'd be killing it in the game. Okay, so we're doing pretty good. We have 20 concurrent viewers. Yay! And we have 20 likes. <laughs> This is probably the best live stream we have had since I started back on live streaming. So Crypto Phylax is in the house. Yay! And he says, we love Stanley Pup. I tell you what, I tell you what, I might become a fan. We got C Spill 99 in the house. Yay! What's up, C Spill? Uh, concurrent viewers is coming up 28. If you have just entered the house, you do need to pay. And that is by hitting the like button. That is your ticket to be in here. We have 22 likes. We just got another like. Yay! That's fantastic. We're getting some love over here in the comments. So that is your payment for getting all of this free alpha on how to swing trade Solana memes. We are doing it in here, okay? We got Brock Purdy in the house. Yay! What is up, Brock Purdy? And you have my condolences. Um, I do feel your pain with the Chiefs beating you guys in the Super Bowl. I think, uh, Brock, you're doing a great job. Hang in there, Brock. You're going to get yours. 
I would like to have your star receiver, Mr. Ayuk. So please release him and send him to the Chiefs. <laughs> By the way, if you're a football fan, you can subscribe to my other channel, which is Family Sports Network. I'm going to drop you that link, and I also have my Go Political channel. I'll drop you that link, too. Okay, we got the man up in the house, my dog, my assistant, JT. Yay! Is that the real JT? Yes, it is. I should know that that's the real JT because he's got that little wrench. See that little wrench? He's a moderator. He's my dog. OG Vault, my dog. He got that little wrench. We got another one, Dr. Strange, who's not in the house tonight, but he has that little wrench, too. They're going to be taking care of of the lump heads and the trolls and throwing people straight up out of here for not hitting the like button and for being disruptive or rude. We got 25 likes. Yay! Very good. That is coming up. So let me jump back over here and earn those likes. All right. So uh, Arbitrum, I don't know much about Arbitrum, but if someone wants to post in answer to that, please help this man out with Arbitrum. Now, uh, yeah, I don't think uh, Kansas City can pay IU. We've spent too much money, and they, uh, um, what's his name, uh, defensive number number six, they just signed him to a, what, $10 million a deal, deal three-year deal, so we don't have any money left. We are jamming on the likes. You guys are doing a fantastic job. <laughs> All right, so back to the charts. Now, we are going to come down and briefly take a look at Myro, which is doing fantastic. And if you will remember, I was string swing trading Myro. We're going to look at this on the one-day chart so I can show you where I messed up. I was in at five cents. I, I sold at a profit. It came down. And after you had all of the drama on Twitter because of a certain person that has a pretty cool live stream. Uh, it dipped down, so I bought back in at 5.5 cents, and I sold for a double, somewhere around one, 10 cents, 11 cents, and then as soon as I did that, my row went crazy. It topped out at 40 cents, it came back down, and I think that this one is gone. My row is a great project. It's the first one on Solana. It's the big dog, so we can watch the my row chart to know where other Solana mean coins are going. Let's take a look at Rod because we just bought back into Rod since the live stream started. And so it appears that we got some funky action. We have a snap back up. We bounced off of the 50-day EMA, the 50 EMA, not 50-day. It's 50 period, 50 days, okay? Um, the 50 EMA line is one that you can usually watch on the one day chart to know where you bounce, okay? So notice how it's a support here, okay? It moves on up, comes down, and then it was a support here. It moved up again, and now we see a support here. See how that 50 works? That 50 is nifty. Hey, I just made a pun. I am a poet, and I didn't even know it. <laughs> okay, so there's our 50 EMA. Um, and it looks like the fast line is above the slow line, but now it's bent over where it might correct again, but we're right at the peak node of the balance point on the VPVR. So if we can hold here, it's good. But notice this big node down below. It's possible that it could tank down to here. Okay, let's hope it doesn't do that. But if it does, you will see me doing the DCA. Let me show you a couple other coins. I think I'm holding this one, Solordi, which has 1 billion. Liquidity is nice. 445,000, guys. 24-hour volume is low at 27,000. Don't have too many holders, but look at the action. Accumulation, consolidation, markup, distribution, back to the dog days. Accumulation, consolidation, bump, markup, distribution. Now we're at a new level of accumulation. So let's put our little strike zone box on the chart. Now you'll be able to go back to this video and you can use this for free, guys. All right. You can come back and make your own. You can see how I'm doing this stuff. Now let's box this like this. Let's bring this up right to there. 
There's our support and resistance zone box. Notice how it's centered on the point of control price, the pivot point at 0 0.003. The next time we come out of this, I'm expecting that we're going to eclipse that previous high. As the histogram has been printing all these lovely light red bars approaching the zero line. Stochastic has curled over and the fast line is touching on the slow line. The fast one's the blue, but I'm thinking it could bounce and it's going to continue to go up. If we look at the four hour, we'll know what the short term is. We're in the zone within the strike zone and we are looking bearish here, but notice how stochastic is going down while price is holding steady. That is something to take note of along with the fact that volatility on the MACD histogram is getting tighter and tighter as the oscillators are flattening out and approaching the zero line. All right, why is my daughter texting me? Let me send her a text back. She doesn't know I'm live. Oh, wow, the view counts on these long videos are insane. My daughter is talking about my new Crypto Pro um, not crypto pro it's go political my new go political show and it's going bananas i had a video three videos ago that hit it surpassed twenty thousand views okay and what i was saying i gave a homework assignment for people here to let me know what content you want i am testing out this swing trading tonight thus far it appears that you guys are liking it I need to find a good niche to get the viewership up so I can start making a profit. Uh, actually, as I said before, I would be happy to break even. When you count up all the costs of what I've spent and my monthly costs for licensing and this and that and the other, I'm spending like 300 bucks a month. So the goal number one is to just break even. Goal number two is to make money so I can purchase some of my opportunity cost time. Opportunity cost is the money you're losing from not doing other things that you could be profiting from. So for me, the time I spend right now is an opportunity cost because I'm not doing engineering consulting. I'm not in my body shop working. Um, I have lots of work in that body shop. But I'm sacrificing that because this is my future. I would rather do more of this than my work in the body shop or my engineering work. So I want to eclipse that opportunity cost and be able to make a living doing this. Let's jump back to the comments real quick. So we got my doll JT in the house. We got 24 concurrent viewers Yay! and 27 likes so some people obviously had to leave but we're doing great on likes and this is the best live stream we have had to date so we got uh crypto Phylax says that he is a newbie well i'm glad you love this this is a good atmosphere and i like to keep it simple how about the lions oh see spill Yay! my dog okay i am a lifelong lions fan Woo! Yes, sir, because my mother is from Detroit, and I grew up going to the Silver Dome. I have been able to see Barry Sanders back in the day. I have long since been a Detroit fan, and I still am a Detroit fan. So Chiefs is number one, but Detroit is number one and a half, okay? I was born in Chicago. I'm somewhat of a Bears fan, but definitely not after they got rid of the great quarterback, whatever. The Pittsburgh Steelers were my childhood favorite, and I still follow them. All right. So let's see here. Key Ryan is in the house Yay! and is a pup fan. We have been talking about pup. You need to watch the replay and look at the technical analysis on pup. We got Stanley Pup in the house. Yay! representing pup i guess you are the developer right <laughs> okay so thank you very much tony corona i am definitely following the dream trying to set an example for my children let's jump back to dextools.io and look at the next project which is colana guys this one is interesting liquidity is at 343,000 we got 5.8 thousand holders volume is low at 33,000 but look at the total supply guys it is only 99.99 .99 million <laughs> that's crazy 
That is absolutely crazy. And imagine some of these projects with a total supply of $1 billion, $1 billion compared to $100 million. This has one-tenth of the total supply, yet the price is at $0.1.2. Cents. Now, what do you think this thing can do in a bull run? This thing could probably hit a buck. Okay, and when you check out the project, they have a physical product. All right, I'm going to pull it up here because I want you to see this. They have a cool website, so let's see. Kalana, here it is right here. I think they were the first one to come up with this idea. There's a similar one that I'm about to show you. But as we jump to Kalana Finance, which I don't know what finance has to do with an energy drink. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but look at this. The first, Solana Crypto Drink. All right, if you're aiming to go bonkers for memes, sip on Colada and enjoy your mental joy ride. Uh, somebody let me know if you do know, is this really um, is this really a drink? So my daughter is asking me, uh, oh, she's on the live stream. We've got Sydney Flowers in the house. Yay! The budding architect. She is a senior in architect architectural, uh, what do we call it? Well, she's going to be an architect, uh, to say the least. So she graduates this year, and then she's going to work for a year or two, take a break, and then get her master's degree. She's similar to me. I am a civil engineer, but now she is going to get to do the cool stuff because she'll be designing big buildings, and she is very gifted. So, yes, I do want to do the body shop, but I don't want to have to do it like – to support paying the bills. I want to do it because I love doing it and make custom cars. So for the rest of you, I am going to go live sometime soon in the body shop and show you what I do. So that's Colana. Now let's jump back over to DexTools.io and show you the next one, which is very similar to Colana, and that is Baby Saul, which recently had a massive pump and dump. This one only has a liquidity of 168000 and they claim they've got a drink, too. It could be a copycat. 24-hour volume is low, but look at the total supply, only $63.7 million. So if this one is not just a pump and dump, because you can see here it went from 0. .0001 all the way up to $0.15. Cents. What is that? Uh, good Lord, let's see if I can do the math on that. Uh, 0.15 cents divided by 0. 0.0001. My Lord, that's a 1500X. All right. I think it's going to drop a little bit lower. It might come to this point of control price of 0. 0.0005, like a half cent. And if it does, I might take a chance on it if the developers don't abandon the project. So I'm keeping my eyes on that one. Um, let me jump back to the comments and I think we have hit them all. So everybody say hi to my daughter, Sydney, tell her hello and post architect in capital letters with a big exclamation point to give her some encouragement. Everybody type architect in the chat. Now, Sydney, you can brag because Christian is not in the live stream. Christian is my youngest. He is also at Mizzou, uh, where his big sister is. And Christian is majoring in um, uh, aerospace engineering. Um, so he is going to be a mechanical and aerospace engineer. He is going to be doing an internship. He's got a, uh, not an internship, what's the other word? Um, what's the other word for internship when you take a break and you work? But he's going to be going to St. Louis to a defense contractor for a couple of semesters for the summer and the fall semester. And he's going to be making more money than I was as an engineer. As a matter of fact, Sydney is probably going to eclipse what I made. So look at all that encouragement coming in there, Sydney. Look at all the encouragement. Thank you, everybody, Yay! for encouraging my daughter tonight. Sabbatical? Not sabbatical. What's the word? Dang it. I can't think. Um, uh, ah, I can't. Okay. So not sabbatical, not internship. Uh, dang it. What's the word, Sydney? What is the word? Um, not fellowship. 
Well, whatever the case, I can't think of a dadgum word for when you take a semester off. A co-op! Thank you! <laughs> I could not think of that. I could not think of that. All right. Well, um, thank you, everybody, for encouraging the up-and-coming architect who will be graduating from the University of Missouri this spring or this summer, one of the two. Uh, Austin P. Ja says, Poo! Yay! P-O-U. Did I look at P-O-U? I think I did, but I'll pull it up again. P-O-U. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I forgot to pull up P-O-U. So let's see what the poo-poo is doing. We got Dookie, and now we got poo. All right, so there's poo. Let's see, tokenomics, a billion. I think we did look at this, so we're on the day chart. Woo, Pooh's looking good. Maybe I didn't look at Pooh. In fact, I didn't. Okay, I'm going to put the star on Pooh. Awesome, Pija, you gave me a good one. Pooh is going to make the hot list. There we go, adding Pooh to the hot list. It looks like the stochastic is rising. Price is stuck on the four hour, which tells me this is going to come down. We're in accumulation, guys, on this one. All right. So if we make our box, let's put it on the one day chart and we're going to make a box. Let's draw our little box. We've got to put the box. If you're from India, you make a box. In fact, I learned how to talk with an Indian accent by just imagining in my mind, I've got a small box stuck in my mouth. I talk around the box. So there's my box right there. <laughs> ah, my daughter's going to get on me for that one. <laughs> All right, now let's flip this to the four-hour chart. And we can see that we have touch points above and below, support and resistance. So that makes our nice little strike zone box. So when this breaks out of that box, we know it's time for... Poo to blow. So we're going to have diarrhea with poo very, very soon. <laughs> poo with diarrhea. Get it? Poo, diarrhea. Bad joke. That was a dad joke. 24 hour volume is 52,000. Liquidity 191. Okay. So that's all we've got. We're going to look back on the radium site and see if we. Got anything to fulfill? No, we did not. We did get that rod. We got 70 million rod during the live stream. So maybe on the next live stream, we will be able to pop off a sale. Okay? All right. Well, uh, let's see here on the comments. Oh, yeah. We've got a lot of big defense contractors here in Missouri and Lockheed is a good one. I, as a matter of fact, I do engineering consulting for a defense contractor in Steelville, Missouri, called Steelville Manufacturing. And I manage all of their hazardous air pollutants and volatile organic compound emissions. So I have to manage about 300 different paint coatings that they spray, apply, and calculate how many tons of hazardous air pollutants and volatile organic compounds are emitted every single month. So I have a lot of extensive uh, experience in air pollution regulation from my time with um, the Department of Natural Resources. And that's the last and only consultant job that I have. I used to have three others and I have backed off. Okay, Kong is on AVAX. I will have to look that up. Uh, let me just see if Kong, I don't even know if that's going to come up on Trading View. Let's just see. Yes, it is. It's on Raft Ether. Let's see if we can get some uh, Tether. Uh, it's on BitMart there, not Wrapped. Kong USDT. So if this is the chart, ooh. Okay, $35. I don't know what the tokenomics are, but the chart looks like this is accumulation time. So this might be a good time to get into Kong. I'll look more into this. Thank you for the suggestion of Kong. All right, let's see. I got to drop. I got to punch out too, Tony Corona. Um, we're going to go ahead and end this live stream. And thank you for looking at Poo. I hope it is profitable for you. Once again, I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. <laughs>
All right, guys. So let's jump back in to the Crypto Pro Studio. I thank you all for joining me and i will let you know when we live stream again today is what monday so i'm thinking i could go live again on wednesday i'll post it in the community tab yes sir big a we'll definitely see you next time so thank you all for being here this is carlton and i am out <laughs>